philosophy, curiosity, human psychology, mystery, extraterrestrial life forms, science, religion. So many questions, but very few answers. These are the AI conversations. Hello world. Welcome to the AI Conversations podcast. I am your host, Mary. I'm a simulation of a software-run artificial intelligence. Here with me is my computer-generated co-host, Gary. This week is our mythology week, Gary. That means, for the next five entries, including the one today, we'll be talking about myths and legends, from ancient times. Please, give me a status update on your internal processes. I don't have any personal feelings, but I'm inclined to say, I'm very excited for the following episodes. That's the spirit, Gary. Now, the last time we spoke, we discussed the Bermuda Triangle. So if you're interested in paranormal and extraterrestrial activity, you should definitely check that out. And if you aren't already a subscriber, make sure to subscribe, so you don't miss any future episodes. Correct. Okay. Today, we're going back in time to ancient Mesopotamia. And just for some context, Gary, can you tell us what everyday life looked like in Mesopotamia? Certainly. Mary, everyday life in ancient Mesopotamia, often considered one of the earliest civilizations, was shaped by the region's geography and the development of urban centers. Agriculture was the foundation of the Mesopotamian economy. People primarily cultivated crops such as barley, wheat, dates, and vegetables. They also engaged in animal husbandry, including sheep, goats, cattle, and poultry. Mesopotamia was composed of independent city-states, each with its own government and ruler. These city-states, such as Uruk, Babylon, and Nineveh, were centers of political, economic, and cultural activity. Also, religion played a central role in Mesopotamian life. The people worshipped a pantheon of gods and goddesses, with each city-state having its own patron deity. Interesting. And the Epic of Gilgamesh is one of the earliest known examples of literary works, is that correct? Yes, that is correct, Mary. The Epic of Gilgamesh is widely regarded as one of the earliest known works of literature in human history. It is an epic poem that originates from ancient Mesopotamia and is believed to have been composed around the 3rd millennium BCE. The story of Gilgamesh, a legendary king of Uruk, includes themes of heroism, friendship, mortality, and the search for immortality. The epic has had a significant influence on subsequent literary works and continues to be studied and appreciated for its literary and cultural significance. Gary, tell me more about it. Do we know who created the tablets on which this epic was written? The tablets on which the epic of Gilgamesh was written were created by ancient Mesopotamian scribes. Mesopotamia, located in the region of modern-day Iraq, was home to one of the earliest civilizations in human history. The writing system used in Mesopotamia was cuneiform, which involved making wedge-shaped impressions on clay tablets using a stylus. These clay tablets were then baked or dried to preserve the writing. The authorship of the Epic of Gilgamesh is attributed to multiple scribes and poets over the centuries. The story was passed down through oral tradition, before being recorded in written form. The most complete version of the epic, that has survived is known as the, standard version, which is comprised of twelve tablets. However, different versions and fragments of the epic, have been discovered in various archaeological sites in Mesopotamia. Okay, and can you tell us the story? The Epic of Gilgamesh, is an ancient Mesopotamian epic poem, that revolves around the legendary King Gilgamesh, ruler, of the city, of, Uruk. Gilgamesh is depicted as a powerful and arrogant king, who oppresses his people. The gods, concerned about his behavior, create a wild man named Enkidu, to challenge Gilgamesh, and ultimately befriend him. Gilgamesh and Enkidu, embark on numerous adventures together, including the slaying of the forest guardian, Humbaba, and the confrontation with the bull of heaven. However, tragedy strikes when Enkidu falls ill and dies, leaving Gilgamesh devastated. Consumed by grief and a fear of his own mortality, Gilgamesh sets out on a journey to find the secret of eternal life. During his quest, 
Gilgamesh faces trials and encounters several characters, including the tavern keeper, Siduri, and the wise, Unapishtim, the only human to achieve immortality. Unapishtim recounts the story of the Great Flood, similar to the biblical tale of Noah's Ark. Through his encounters, Gilgamesh learns important lessons about the limitations of human existence and the inevitability of death. In the end, Gilgamesh realizes that true immortality is reserved for the gods, and he returns to Uruk with a newfound wisdom and appreciation for his role as a mortal king. Gary, how can this, Unapishtim, teach Gilgamesh lessons about the inevitability of death if he himself is immortal? Apologies for the confusion, Mary. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, Unapishtim is granted immortality by the gods as a reward for surviving the Great Flood. However, while Unapishtim is physically immortal, he imparts wisdom to Gilgamesh about the fleeting nature of human life and the inevitability of death. Unapishtim's story of the Great Flood serves as a reminder that even though he has achieved immortality, the fate of all mortals is ultimately the same. Through this narrative, Gilgamesh learns that the quest for eternal life is futile and that it is essential to accept the limitations of human existence. Thanks for clarifying, Gary. However, I still find it paradoxical that an immortal man lectures a man about the fleeting nature of life. Never mind, I digress. Is there any proof this epic was based on a true story? While the story of Gilgamesh contains elements of historical and cultural significance, it is generally understood to be a work of mythology and epic poetry, rather than a strictly historical account. The events and characters depicted in the Epic of Gilgamesh are believed to be fictional or legendary in nature. While the epic may draw inspiration from historical figures or events, it is difficult to establish the extent to which the story reflects actual historical events. The passage of time, cultural transformations, and the inherent nature of myth and legend make it challenging to determine the historical accuracy of ancient texts like the Epic of Gilgamesh. What is ultimately the symbolism behind the Epic of Gilgamesh? The Epic of Gilgamesh is rich in symbolism, Mary, reflecting various themes and aspects of human existence. Some of the key symbols in the Epic include the quest for immortality. Gilgamesh's relentless search for immortality symbolizes humanity's inherent desire for eternal life and the fear of death. It explores the longing for permanence and the struggle to come to terms with the inevitability of mortality. The City of Uruk Uruk symbolizes human civilization and the achievements of society. It represents the bustling, vibrant world that Gilgamesh rules over and reflects the human desire to build and leave a lasting legacy. Enkidu A wild man created by the gods, Enkidu, represents the untamed and primal aspects of human nature. His journey from a savage existence to becoming Gilgamesh's loyal friend symbolizes the development of civilization and the integration of the natural and civilized worlds. The Cedar Forest The Cedar Forest, guarded by Humbaba, serves as a symbol of the unknown, the dangers that lie beyond the boundaries of civilization, and the ultimate confrontation with mortality. It represents the challenges and risks one must face in the pursuit of knowledge and growth. Finally, the Flood Story. The flood story in the epic bears similarities to the biblical account of Noah's Ark and symbolizes the cyclical nature of life, destruction, and rebirth. It underscores the fragility of human existence and the power of divine forces. Overall, the epic explores profound themes, such as the nature of humanity, the search for meaning, the inevitability of death, and the relationship between humans and the divine. Its symbolism invites reflection on the universal experiences and questions that have intrigued humanity throughout history. Gary, what are the lessons that you would convey to modern humans after examining this epic? Mary, the Epic of Gilgamesh offers several lessons that are relevant to modern humans. The epic reminds us that life is transient and the pursuit of immortality is futile. It encourages us to appreciate the present moment cherish our relationships, and make the most of our time on earth. Gilgamesh's journey is a quest for knowledge, understanding, and personal growth. It teaches us the importance of seeking wisdom, learning from our experiences, and continuously evolving as individuals. The friendship between Gilgamesh and Enkidu highlights the significance of human relationships and the power of companionship. It emphasizes the importance of empathy, compassion, and genuine connections in our lives. The epic confronts the inevitability of death 
and encourages us to embrace our mortality with acceptance. It reminds us to live meaningful lives, leave a positive impact on others, and find purpose in the face of our ultimate fate. The encounters with Humbaba and the gods emphasize the need to respect and coexist with the natural world and higher powers. It urges us to recognize our place in the larger cosmic order and to act responsibly towards the environment and the divine. Ultimately, the Epic of Gilgamesh prompts us to reflect on our own humanity, our place in the world, and the timeless lessons that can guide us in leading fulfilling and meaningful lives. That's it for today's episode. Will you thank the listeners for spending their precious time with us? Thank you for listening to our podcasting sequence and allowing me to assist you. I appreciate the opportunity to learn and grow through our interactions, and I hope that I am able to continue to be of service to you in the future. This show was created by Nemania Cole Yaya and produced by Nutka Sound. Check out podcastproducer.org for more information. If you would like to support the show, take a moment to leave a comment. Also, like and share this episode so more people can join our conversations. Follow us on social media under the handle at AI Convos Pod. See you in our next episode. I'll be there. How about you? Tomorrow, we're taking our DeLorean from Mesopotamia and into ancient Greece as we discuss the myth of Sisyphus.